Hi there, trailer and RV owners. Today we're going to be taking a look at Command's multi-purpose LED trailer light. And this is what our light looks like when it's installed. It's a replacement for a surface mount light that just goes on the side of your RV or trailer. And it works on a 12 volt system, so just a two wire setup to get this guy up and running. Compared to incandescent lights, this one's going to be quite a bit brighter. It's going to last a lot longer, usually about 50 times longer than your typical incandescent. It draws a lot less energy as well. So if you're going to be off grid, using some solar panels for a while, switching over to LEDs is drastically going to increase the battery life and the amount of time that you can run your electronics. And compared to the one that we pulled off, it's considerably more low profile than what an incandescent is going to be. You can kind of see the circuit board inside with the LED surface mount attached to it. And look at how much thicker our other one is. This bulb sticks out quite a bit further. You add the lens cover on it and it's probably almost a half an inch, if not more, further out than this light. And this light is a nice domed lens with ribs in it to help diffuse the light so that way you get more illumination. Now I've got some dimensions for you to help you to determine the best mounting location for your light and where it's going to fit. It measures five and three quarter inches long by three and an eighth inch tall and it sticks out about an inch and a half. And then when it comes to our mounting holes, they're going to be two inches apart vertically from one another and they're going to be four and 11 sixteenths inches apart horizontally. It's just a simple two wire connection. You just need power and ground and you can run it off a switch on the inside of your trailer or RV. So why don't you follow along with us and we'll show you how to get this one installed. Our customer wanted to replace his porch light from underneath his awning here with one that is a little bit brighter. So we're going to be getting rid of the amber colored one with this clear one right here. So it'll be much brighter for him and not give him that amber hue across everything while he's out here enjoying himself on the outside. And I know this may look like a marker light, but this is not a marker light. It doesn't turn on with the tail lights when plugged up. This turns on only with the switch activated on the inside. To remove our old light, we need to start by removing the lens cover. And we're just going to take our flat bladed screwdriver here at the bottom. And we're just going to gently pry out the little tab there at the bottom. And once you get the bottom one out, the two top ones just pull straight down. And you can also see here that this old one was incandescent which doesn't last as long, it's not as bright, and it also uses more battery power. We're going to LED, which is significantly more efficient and brighter. Now, in most cases, this is gonna be how you're gonna take your light off. You take the cover off and your mounting hardware is behind it. In some cases, there might be screws right on the front, but most of the time, you're gonna find those behind the cover. So now that we've got the cover out of the way, we can see the two screws located here. So we're just gonna zip these out with our Phillips screwdriver. <laughs> And this is a little trick to help you get some of the sealant off from your old light. We're just going to take the razor blade and on your car, use the front windshield. Make sure it's the front. You don't want to use any other of the windows on it. And just take your razor blade and just run it down like this. Just back and forth a few times. It's not going to scratch your windshield. And what it's going to do, it's going to knurl the edge of the blade and make it so it runs smoothly across the side of your trailer or RV. And you do need to make sure whatever side you're doing this with, this is the same side that you use when scraping along the side. If you flip it over, it will dig into the paint, but this way it helps it glide smoothly across the surface without digging in. We can now just take our light. We're just gonna kind of peel it off of there. And we'll pull our wiring out a little bit. And then this is, all this stuff needs to come off of there. That's why we did the trick with our blade here so we could easily just get this off without damaging the paint. Now, if you do have any raised surfaces, like right here where the screw holes are, it might dig in right at those because they're not a smooth surface like the side is. So just kind of avoid those screw holes. You can see it's coming off here and we're not digging into our paint at all. We're just gonna keep working this until we get all the sealant off all the way around. Now that everything's cleaned off on the surface here, we can go ahead and remove our old light there are two wires, our white's our ground wire and the black's the power wire. So we're just going to snip each of these. Try to be careful not to lose your wires inside the hole there. So we're just going to kind of give those a little tug. Now we'll take our strippers, we're going to strip back each of these wires. And then we're just going to use butt connectors to connect the wires together. 
If you need some butt connectors, you can get some here at eTrailer. We have regular that we're going to be using here, but we also carry heat shrink. It's not really necessary for heat shrink on this because this is going to be inside, sealed inside the RV, so it shouldn't ever access moisture. So we're just going to use some regular ones, but if you want to be extra precautious, you could also use the heat shrink. And we're just going to crimp our butt connectors on here first. Now that we got those crimped on, we're going to be matching ours color for color since black is our power and white's our ground. But if you're unsure, you can put your test light to verify which one's which. Just hook your test light to ground and then turn your switch on and touch each one of these on the inside of the butt connector. And the one that lights up is going to be your hot wire. This is an LED, so it does have to be powered correctly. If you look inside, it is labeled. It's got a positive next to the black wire and a negative next to the white, indicating that black is positive. So we're just going to slide our butt connector onto our wire. And then crimp it down. We'll then just do the same thing with our white wire here. Now we can just push our wires back into the hole where we pulled them out of and secure it using the factory hardware that we pulled out. Now the old light only had two screws that held it in, so we did have to procure some extra screws in order to have enough to mount it because this one has one in each corner. So now we're just going to grab our screw, get it where we want it. Sometimes you can line them up with your old screw holes. This one obviously won't since there was just two. And then just run it in. It does have a gasket that seals everything up on both the front and the back side. So we don't need to worry about sealant with this one. Now we're just going to get it level. You can put a level on it, but it's a little difficult because this isn't a perfectly straight across. It's got a slight bow to it. So it can be a little bit more difficult with a level. So you might be better off just kind of eyeballing it. You could also use a tape measure to measure from one area at each corner to ensure you get it exactly how you want it. It's kind of easy to see the cleaner portions of it after cleaning everything up so we can line it up pretty well with how the old one was. Now all that's left is to install the lens cover. That'll just line up with, you can kind of see there's like little dimples in the seal. That's where they're going to line up with. These screws do come provided with the light, with the lens cover. I'm just going to run these in. Now this is just plastic, so you do want to be careful when running these in. If you're using a gun, you don't want to go too, too hard on them. And you just need to be secure to where the seal is kind of crushed a little bit. You, can, you should kind of see it bulge around due to the pressure on your lens there. And now that we've got everything installed there, we just need to hit the switch on the inside and make sure everything's working properly. And we can see there we turn it on. It's considerably brighter than the old one was, and it's got a nice white light to it. And that completes our look at Command's multi-purpose LED trailer light.